Greetings, dear suckers. My name's Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And welcome to Skinwalker. A game with no main menu, apparently. But besides that, it's another RPG Maker horror game from the golden age of YouTube. This one is a bit less well-known, I'd say, than a bunch of the other big RPG Maker horror games like Witch's House and what have you. But hey, it was apparently big enough that references to it made it into a Markiplier fan game. Pretty significant references at that. So that's something. This one, though, I'm not just doing because Markiplier and some other YouTubers back in that era of YouTube played it. No. This is because I have something to vent about. Something related to skinwalkers. Okay. So, a long time ago, years and years ago, I read this one creepypasta. I... I don't know if... I think it was skinwalkers or, or something... Or something adjacent to them. And... <laughs> it was one of the most boring creepypastas I've ever ever read to this day it was just like i'm not easily scared i admit but i can understand what makes other people scared and this wasn't it like there was this one point where it was just like oh there are this many people in the group but then later they they discover that there are this many people in the group Ooh. oh sorry did i say one moment I meant to say eleven. Thousand. That was basically all that happened. That was the entire source of the scares. Ooh, there are this many people, but actually there's this many people. It was... I don't remember it very well, but it wasn't even trying. I remember one... there was this one comment on it saying something along the lines of the scariest part of this creepypasta was when the brats that they were cooking suddenly turned into hot dogs. <laughs> Which should just tell you how little proofreading there actually was on that creepypasta. There wasn't even like an interesting creepy thing that happened at the ending. There basically was no ending. Ugh. It was so dumb. And I can't fucking find it now. I just had to get that off my chest. Quite possibly the worst creepypasta I've ever read. If you know what I'm talking about, tell me its name in the comments. I know you can't post a link to it because YouTube is fucking- is run by fascists. But give me a name. And I, as long as it's not something incredibly generic like just Skinwalker, you know, like this game, then I can probably find it. Anyway, so... Yeah, much like the other RPG Maker Horror games, I haven't actually watched or watched these videos or played them or anything like that in many years. But this one left even less of an impression on me. I know, I remember basically nothing about it. So, without any further ado, the following story really happened. I saw it with my own eyes. Maybe it didn't happen as I saw it, but more on that later. We were all going out camping, me and three friends from university. Let me introduce my friends. This is Darren. I wouldn't say that he is our group of friends' leader, there should, be an, there should be an apostrophe after the S. Or, actually, I would. Make up your fucking mind, then. He's that one that always gets us all out of the house and into the action. Fucker. He's the first one to hit on that cute girl by the bar. He's the first one to jump from the roof into the swimming pool. According to himself... He was even more impulsive when he was a kid. I can only imagine his childhood, and how often he must have broken his leg, raped his knees, and hit his head. I'll bet he hit his head. 
Still, if it weren't for Darren, we wouldn't have half the amount of fun we have. This girl is Celeste. What a name. We have known each other since we were children. We met each other when she moved into the house next door when I was seven. My mom told me to go show her around the neighborhood, and after that, we were inseparable for a few years. She's a nice girl, although her health isn't the best. She has some kind of heart problem, which I forgot the name of. This forced her to be away from school during extended periods of time during her childhood. Because of this, until we started university, I was her only friend. Still, she never complained, and I've always seen her as a positive, happy girl. And this guy with a horrifying face... ...is me. I'm Joe. As the name implies, I'm pretty normal. I don't have any overwhelmingly bad qualities, but on the other hand, I don't have any overwhelmingly... I don't have any overwhelmingly good ones, either. In other words, I'm a protagonist. <laughs> a generic protagonist. I live in this apartment a short walk from my university. This is where us four friends usually gather before going out. This guy here, looking all relaxed on my bed, is Michael. He's my neighbor, living in the apartment next door. One day, while I had Celeste over, he just barged in. Hey man, your place looks pretty nice. Mind if I join you for dinner? He said. As you can imagine, he's pretty pushy. I don't think he realizes it himself. <laughs> he came over several times after that day. After that, we somehow naturally became friends. Heh, <laughs> I don't think he's pushy. I think he's just... Willing to put himself out there, you know? Willing to just go out there and try and get what he wants, you know? Well, maybe you don't. So, one day Darren came... So, one day Darren came with the idea that we should go camping. Fucker. Darren said his family had a cabin a little bit into the forest. I have something that qualifies as camping, actually, but alright. So camping we went. It could be fun, right? <laughs> Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. Nice. Of course, me, Michael, and Celeste disliked the idea of staying in a cabin. Imagine that, especially with the fucking space trees surrounding it, apparently. It's a camping trip. We have to sleep in the wilderness. So Darren told us about the woods near the cabin. I don't remember much about the trip to the cabin. We joked around, rammed a hitchhiker, took a few breaks, and roasted his body on a spit. Normal stuff. Either way, we drove up to the cabin and left the car there. We took a short break in the cabin and set out into the wilderness. We went pretty far in. I can't say how far in distance exactly, because it's top secret and I'd have to kill you if you learned, but it took several hours to get to where we set up camp. The first day we just screwed around, oh my. Nothing abnormal happened. But then... But then... The murders happened. Um... Did you sleep well last night? Okay. Good old Joe the mute. <laughs> or maybe just. Morning there. Or should I say, good afternoon. Fix us some wood for a fire, will ya? I sit out to gather wood for a new fire and water to cook with. 
like the mule that I am. Ah, yes, a little circuitous path through the wilderness, because as we all know, trees are an impassable barrier. What is that sound? Doesn't sound like something you hear in a forest. Hmm, very interesting. I should go investigate it. <laughs> no. I need water or we won't be able to eat anything tonight. Oh, for... There we go, a bucket of water. Now... We already have enough water. What? Now... Okay. The sound stopped. What the heck is... Oh, that's a plant. I thought it was a bird. My head hurts. We sure had a blast yesterday, didn't we? <laughs> that we did, if you know what I mean. Poured water into cooking pot. Poured water over this guy's head. I should have enough wood to make the fire last a while tonight. Okay. Alright, let's cook something up, shall we? What? I don't know. Shall we? Well, audience, shall we? God, you people are so rude. You never respond. <laughs> Later that evening. Those are some funky fire particles. What the hell is up with this fog? Every time I've been up here before, there haven't ever been any... Ever been any fog. There haven't ever been any... Sure, man. That was a sentence. It's time to go to sleep soon. We're all out of booze. <laughs> Guess we have to go back to town tomorrow. Man, two days and you're already out, all out of booze. Maybe you should... Maybe you should have packed a bit more. I'm not looking forward to that four-hour trek. Maybe we shouldn't have gone so deep in. <laughs> it's really chilly outside for being in the middle of summer. Hey... Anyone else hear that sound? No, go to sleep. Yeah, no, not, yeah, now that you mention it, what is that? Sounds like something metal-y. I'm not, ah, I'm not doing a good job of differentiating these people's voices. Fuck. Metal-y? <laughs> is that even a word? Are you stupid? Shut up, asshole. A word if I say so. The word is metallic. It stopped. Maybe it was some kind of machine? Who the hell would go hours from the nearest civilization in the middle of the night and start ribbing up some kind of weird machine? A chainsaw murderer, that's who. Or maybe someone rev uh, starting up a wood chipper, I don't know. Who gives a shit? It's probably someone using a chainsaw or something. Oh, that's comforting. Let's go to sleep. I'm tired. I'm sure... Th I'm sure that was no chainsaw. I wonder what it was. Wait, was that supposed to be Celeste talking? Whatever. Sleepiness soon overtook everyone. But something woke you up a few hours later, in your half-awake half sleep- estate. 
in your half-wake state. Wait, why is it suddenly second person? What? Why is it suddenly second person narration? <laughs> this is a weird game. You stumbled outside the tent. Darren? Michael? Celeste? Is that you? The mist is even thicker than before. I can't see much. Well, time to go back to bed. I should check out that sound. Should you? Should you really? <laughs> Have you watched a horror movie? Or a movie in general? Okay. Sure. Why not? I mean, I can think of about 12 reasons why not off the top of my head. Oh. Hi. Evening, gent. M Michael? Is that you? Say something, will ya? Who are you? Whoa, stop right there, I have a knife! Time to go, Joe! Time to go, Joe! Shit! Yes, exactly. I feel like that was the... Whatever. Oh, I'm in control. And time to go back to sleep. No. Hey, wake up! There's something outside the tent! Uh, what? Ugh. I'm sure there is. Lots of squirrels and shit. Go back to sleep. Hey, is Michael here? Hmm. Yeah, I'm here. Why wouldn't I be? I, I don't know. The thing outside looked like you. Wow. Racism. It was probably some animal. Wow. Racism. I don't think we have to worry about a fox or whatever. If it was this, if it looked like him, that means it was probably the size of him, which means it's more likely to be a fucking bear or some such. Which I think you, well, actually, bears aren't really that dangerous, to be fair. I, although my, I might be biased there. Take it easy and go back to sleep. Well, all right then. Maybe it was just some animal. The sounds. A few minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Maniacal Laugh. Okay, drop it. Whoever that is. I want to sleep already. It wasn't me. Me neither. That didn't sound like any of our voices. Also, why would any of us be maniacally laughing in the middle of the night? Well, shit. No, I'm never going to be able to sleep. Sh should we go outside and look? What if it's some crazy psycho with an axe? All the more reason to check it out. It's not like the tent is some kind of impenetrable fortress. Seriously, if that was one of you guys, tell me right now. This ain't funny anymore. Was it funny to begin with? Well, I guess it must have been funny to someone, considering it was laughing. Okay, everyone get together and check it out. I ain't going alone.
What the heck is that? Someone was, someone was definitely here. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Calm down, Celeste. We are four against one here. It'll be fine. What if the dude got some kind of weapon with him? I mean, he killed this... I mean, he killed this little critter, didn't he? Michael's right. We gotta get the hell out of here. To be fair, killing little critters isn't particularly hard, even without a weapon. You can't just up and leave. It's the middle of the night. What about our stuff? What about our lives? Who are our stuff? I'm not staying here another minute. Fine, we'll leave. But at least bring the flashlight and some food and water. I think you're overreacting, though. We haven't even seen anyone. Still, someone or something left this dead creature here. Yeah. We can't exactly go back to sleep with no worries. I guess you're right. I'll go get the flashlight. Everyone bring some stuff you think we might need. Well, I'll make sure to bring my industrial strength hair dryer. Because I can't live without it. A couple of minutes later. Alright, let's go. And you all casually phase into me. Alright. This is an RPG maker game after all. It's so dark. This is still summer. It's not pitch black. This fog's really annoying though. So we're gonna go back to the So we're going back to the cabin, right? I guess that's the plan. God that was go those were going by fast. I wasn't even clicking anything. Oh hi, Skinwalker. You ain't slick. Why'd you fall behind there, Joe? Why'd you fall behind there? A while later, it became obvious Darren had no idea where we were going. He was swearing and looking all around. You've been walking for awfully long now. Are you sure we're on the right path, Darren? I've walked this path hundreds of times. We are on the right path. I don't recognize anything from when we were walking to the camp, though. I said we are on the right path. Shouting about it isn't going to make it more true. But as time went on, it became obvious that Darren had no idea where we were. Darren couldn't find the path making him tonight's big loser. Maybe it was the fog, maybe the darkness, maybe something else. Maybe he's just bad at directions. Either way, we were lost. I kept looking behind me. I was having that feeling where you think someone is watching or stalking you. I nearly tripped over Celeste when she fell. Help Celeste up. Ha! Huh. Nah. Chivalry is dead. I... The Skinwalker killed it. <laughs> Besides, we need to keep to the code. Those who fall behind, get left behind. You know what? Nah. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. Let's help her up. Why not? I took Celeste's hand and dragged her to her feet. It was getting even mistier. If not for the flashlight, I wouldn't have any idea who she was. What an odd way of phrasing that. I recognize that tree. We're getting to the cabin. Again, I had the feeling that something was watching me. My gut was screaming at me that something, somewhere, was wrong. I realized that I realized the sound from earlier was back. Softer, but still present. I started looking around, panicking. <sighs> panicking. Did a head count, or more accurately, 
silhouette count. Me, Celeste still holding my hand. Darren in the lead. Michael to the left. Who the heck was the guy besides Michael? My grip on Celeste's hand tightened and I quickened my pace. I thought about shouting out but was worried. If I did, maybe the thing would turn around and jump Michael or something. I didn't know what to do. I ran my fingers along a knife I brought from camp. Then the cabin appeared, out of nowhere. The mist was starting to disintegrate around us. It was easier to make out who everyone was now. I looked at the thing next to Michael. She looked just like Celeste. Then who is holding our hand? The thing whose hand I was holding leaned in front of me. It wasn't Celeste. <laughs> Hiya, friend. Lovely jaunt through the woods this is, isn't it? I should have ran or screamed, but my body was clenching up for no reason. The thing turned and walked into the mist. Just like that? Just like that. Why did it... Why did it just... Turn and leave? It ha It had us right there. Our ha It's ha Our hand in its. It even managed to slow me down by using the whole tripping act to isolate me. So why did it just leave and not do anything did it just leave and not do anything to me i caught up with the others as they entered the cabin practically in tears they couldn't find the car and were arguing about where we put it i told them what i saw obviously they didn't believe me still Everyone hurried inside and locked the door. He followed us here. He really wants something from us. He doesn't seem to have anything to break down the door with, though. What the hell does he want with us? Hello, if I know, ask him. Well, maybe he's friendly? He didn't attack me earlier. I don't think so, anyways. Maybe he's just... Maybe he's just really insistent on being a friend. Oh, I was supposed to, I was supposed to press something there. Whoops. Hey, don't touch the door! I wasn't gonna. Hey, don't touch the door! I wasn't gonna- Oh, oh, I've got, got control, okay. <laughs> like, well, what if- What if- Maybe we should just let it in and see what it wants, or at least- Or something like that. <laughs> you know, I'm sure it's fine. Nothing useful inside. Dot dot dot. She's breathing quite heavily. We're safe here. It's cool, man. It's a sturdy door. It'll be alright, won't it? One can only hope. But hope is the first step on the road to disappointment. Did he go away? Maybe we should get two doors between us and it if we're not going to let it in. Then again, maybe we should close this door instead because it's got the windows and such. Then again, those look like a... They look like they have bars, so maybe those are fine. 
Depends on how slippery the skinwalker is. Fireplace. I don't have any matches though. Still fits fireplace. Why did it? Okay. <laughs> oh! Hit! The bastard hit the breaker! Okay, maybe he's not friendly. But he can't get in, right? Yeah! No, but he sure can cause panic. Celeste! He's just... He's just, just trying to scare us. Take it easy. I'm starting to believe what you say you saw earlier. Yeah, you better be. It, it's fine. He's just trying to scare us. You okay? You're not okay, are you? She seems to be hyperventilating. It's alright, Celeste. The door is locked and it's the only way in. Ass assuming those really are... Barred. We're safe here. No response. Yeah. Let's see. No, those are not bars. I mean, not metal bars anyways. Those are very much wood. Those are very much not safe. Maybe we should, maybe we should just be hanging out in that, in that entryway area. It didn't look like it had any windows. Who is that? And why is he red? Don't I don't remember what we saw being that red. Um, hi? I don't remember you being here. We're safe here. It's cool, man. Sure. Well, it seems to have calmed down a bit. Good, good. A couple of books and board games. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen that before. It's like, it's like, look, a, a bench made of a big tree trunk, a table. It's I'm like halfway between them, and so it, so it kind of staggers the. It like activates both and staggers them. I don't. I'm not certain how it determines which one goes first, though. Place don't have any matches. You okay? You saw something looking like me? Apparently. Now let's see, do we have a gun? A gun would come, come in handy real nice right about now. Uh, let's see. Suddenly a strong sentence of nausea hit me. There was something in the air. Tonight. Oh lord. I could feel the horror taking me again. The horror of Spider Island. I, I don't feel so good. Oh god, he's got a heat syncope. Those bastards, you bastards! That or he's about to vanish into dust. can't get up. I'm told that's a very common problem for, for men of your age. You know, one in five. We played some cards here before going out camping. Yes, that's a very useful thing to be paying attention to. Damnation. What do I do? What do I do? No, no, don't. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to lie down. I couldn't sleep and I wouldn't have even if I could. I just wanted to rest. I wanted for the world to stop spinning. I looked out a window. Why is there a window right next to the bed? There was someone in the tree. I stared back, not able to register what was going on. 
quickly pull the blinds down. Celeste came to the door. She looked pale and disheveled. I dragged her to the bed and laid her down. She was gasping for air as if something was suffocating her. Eventually her breathing became more regular. I asked where the others were. She shrugged. Concerning. The room had stopped spinning a bit, but I felt far from good. I'll go look around. Wait here. She's not saying anything. Concerning. Suddenly a voice could be heard from the locked door. What was worse though, was that it was Celeste's voice. Shit. Let me in, let me in, God, let me in there! Immediately pulled my knife and placed it at the Celeste lying in the bed. Her eyes grew wide with shock and alarm. But they could have been faked. Say something, damn it! What are you doing? No, I'm the real one. The one out there, that's the imposter. Okay. That makes things more troublesome. I was kind of in a trance, unsure what to do, and staring down at her. Maybe I would have stabbed her if the voice at the door hadn't changed into some low, deep, guttural voice. God, the, this, fuck, this fucking skinwalker fucker just can't stop self-sabotaging. God damn. Then it became high-pitched, like a little girl's. There should be an apostrophe there. I pulled my- I pulled my knife away. I snapped out of the trance. Now the nausea was returning. I got to the door and opened it. Um, what? There was nothing there but a trail of black liquid. Why did- why would you- Okay. Okay. Now close the door. Suddenly I get this feeling that it might not be the best idea to go outside. No. Really? I can't imagine why. Well, you know what? Fuck it. This, this is the night of bad decisions. I mean, just a, a few minutes ago, I was locking hands with a skinwalker. Let's go. What could go wrong? The thing was nowhere to be seen. Just as I was turning around, I took a look at the roof. There it was. It was close to a corner, about to turn. It looked like an albino male with really long limbs. He had fingers instead of toes, and all 20 of them were elongated. He was facing away from me. Suddenly the head swiveled 180 degrees and stared at me. I started choking up, as if suffocated. It was hard to breathe. The thing opened its mouth, slowly and deliberately. I thought it was going to devour me when its tongue snaked out. On the tip of the tongue was my face like a tumor. Eyes closed, lips upturned to some psycho smile. There's a legend somewhere that when you see a doppelganger, you die. It's not true, of course. I should know. I thought of that legend, but then the creature rounded the corner and it was gone. Is it? What is it doing? It's had two chances now to attack me when I was... Is it even hostile? It cut the power, yes, but and it was pounding on the door, but what does it want? I don't even know if this is some... I lost it and followed vision hazy. My heartbeat suddenly seemed ear-splitting to me. I was stumbling as my legs seemed unable to coordinate. Suddenly I stumbled forward and toppled down. Once I lay there, face down in the grass, my body just seemed to shut down. I couldn't move. Couldn't even turn my head. There was something dripping on my back. My eyelids seemed heavy and started closing of their own accord. Accord. 
I saw white feet with long fingers, her toes step into view. When my eyes opened, Celeste was shaking me. She was on the brink of tears and her voice was cracking. Get up! Get up! That bastard was in your skin! Excuse me? My head hurt. I was about to ask her what happened when she started pulling me backwards toward the door. We toppled out and stumbled toward Darren's car, which was parked in a different location from what I remember. I was glad to be alive. The mist had stopped completely. Celeste was downright crying now. She pushed me into the back seat. That's when I noticed. I was wearing different clothes from when I lost consciousness. Michael was there, huddled up and face buried in his knees. Some clothes, stained with blood, were beside him. They were mine. Darren immediately stepped on the pedal, but nothing happened. He swore and did it again. I noticed that Celeste was armed with a shotgun from the cabin. Shotgun, that would have come in handy a minute ago. I asked him what was going on. Thing joined us. He looked like you. We got out of the house and found the car. We were halfway down the road, then Michael started screaming. I looked at Michael. He had a glazed over look in his eyes. The thing burst out of your clothes and jumped out of the car. Michael had the shotgun. He was firing out the window. We saw the thing run all the way back to the house. At the friggin' speed of light. It was in my skin? Yeah. God, this thing just can't stop self-sabotaging. What the fuck? I looked down at myself. I wonder if I had been possessed, or if worse, the thing had cut off my skin and wore it as a coat. I shuddered at the thought of something crawling around in my skin. I asked Michael if he was alright. Was it even... Was it even literal? like... I'm not even certain how this works. Because it had my... F it already had my face on its tongue or whatever. I'm not, I'm not certain it's actually literally taking your skin. I think it's just copying your skin or something. Hmm. And it didn't... It, again, didn't kill me when it had the chance. I was basically offering myself up on a silver platter, and it still just left me. I mean, it took my skin, sure, but it could have killed me. It could have killed me and then just stayed using my skin, going along with them and everything. But it didn't. Maybe that was just it self-sabotaging, but... Is this thing even... I don't know, this thing is giving me mixed signals here. A lot of mixed signals. It cuts the... It steals people's skin. It cuts the power. It lets all that hellish noise that causes such horror. But at the same time, it just left me laying there. Didn't kill me. It's broken its disguise multiple times when it very easily could have gotten away with it. It just... we During that walk through the woods, it just kind of held my hand. I don't know. The thing talked to me. I asked about what. He didn't respond. I realized he was sobbing. Oh. Was the talking itself horrifying? Or is it that it wasn't that's horrifying? That you couldn't tell? Is that what's upsetting you? That would be pretty horrifying. Darren fist pumped as the car started accelerating. I turned back towards the cabin and saw the albino thing standing on the roof of the house, watching us. I shuddered and turned back. Celeste screamed. The thing was in front of the car, on the windshield. What? Why? What is it doing? 
It can teleport now? But why? It opened it. It opened its mouth, and my tongue face slithered out. Celeste fired the shotgun. The glass shattered, and it was and the glass shattered, and it was thrown backwards. Fuck. Darren shrieked, and I saw blood coming from his face. Oh, dead. Jesus, I think we're doing more damage to ourselves than it is doing to us. Link pierced my face, and I realized it was glass. The car skidded to a stop. The car doors opened without any discernible reason, and I fell out. Shit. The thing lay directly across from me, eyes closed as if it was sleeping. I wish I could close my eyes. Its mouth hung open, and I saw myself again emerging. I didn't move or say anything, because I couldn't. My face looked at me and started to talk. I love you. I love you. I love you. I want to be you. It repeated over and over again. It was coming close to me. I wondered if it was going to bite me to death. The thing's eyes shut open and I realized it was going to kiss me. Shit. Well, now I feel a little bad, to be honest. What a strange creature. What a strange, strange creature you are. And here you are, laying here, bleeding out. And maybe you would have done us ill. Maybe you would have done horrible, horrible things. But I can't help but wonder about that walk through the woods, hand in hand. I managed to regain some control and instinctively twisted back from it. I guess that was what saved me. From what? Oh. That. There was a sound like an explosion and blood spouted from the thing. Celeste was standing over it. Her face and body were bleeding, and she had this spaced out, psychopathic look in her eyes. Fuck. She had just fired the shotgun. My face looked directly at me. I am you. It whispered. She fired again, and I saw my own face begin rotting to nothing more than a skeleton in front of me. The thing's head flowered open. That's the best word I can find to describe it. Its head kind of split and lit again, healing away. I saw faces, lots of them, all on the inside of its head. I think I saw Celeste and Michael's faces. They were whispering something unintelligible. In the center, where the brain should be, there was a single, red, cat-like eye that was rotating in its socket. Poor, poor creature. Instead of a mind of its own, all it had was a covetous eye. A mirror reflecting that which it beholds. What a strange, strange creature you are. Were. It was producing the mechanical droning sound. Celeste fired one last time. The thing sort of withered away, becoming wrinkled and smaller and rotten until it just disappeared. Celeste dropped the shotgun. I started twitching and spasming as control of my body returned to me. Eventually I stood up. We got into the car silently. Darren was bleeding too, but no one said anything. We drove back to the city in silence. Goodbye, you strange, strange creature. Too weird to live, as they say.
We explained away the damaged car as being attacked by some crazy thieves. We had ourselves patched up. Michael was still in a shock-like state. I hear, I hear he was like that for a while. When I asked him what he thought of the incident later, he denied it ever happened, with compelling conviction. His eyes looked dead, and he had lost weight. I really, we really did more damage to ourselves than it did to us, didn't we? The fear of it did us so much damage, so much more than the Skinwalker did. I don't know if he forced himself not to remember, or if he genuinely knows nothing of it. I know what I saw, but I can't remember the exact place. It has been two months now. We still refrain from talking about it. If you were expecting some huge twist or something, you'd be disappointed. You have no idea, Joe. Maybe there isn't a huge twist at the end, but this story has more twists in it than you realize. Than most people would realize, I think. I still don't know what we met out there. I don't want to know, actually. I still have nightmares about my own face, shouting, I am you. One thing I do know, though. I am never going camping ever again. <laughs> All right, then. And that's the end. God damn. I really don't know what to make of this. I, I had watched Markiplier's videos on this, but that was like a decade ago. I genuinely didn't remember any of this besides that there was a skinwalker, which is pretty obvious. I must not have realized back then just how strange this all was on a fundamental level. I don't remember it being that... I mean, it, I, remember it, I remember it just being a pretty standard sort of horror story, but that was... odd. They were so scared of this skinwalker, but... Besides the noise, it never actually harmed them, even when it had ample opportunity. And there were several points where it could have gotten away with, with its deception, and it just didn't. As if it was self-sabotaging or something. And well, my mind keeps coming back to that walk through the woods, hand in hand. The voice saying that it loves me, that it wants to be me. I... I really don't know what to think about this skinwalker. But it could have killed me. It could have killed me multiple times, and it didn't. It could have allowed my friends to leave without me, abandon me in the woods, possibly to die. But it didn't. It could have tricked me into killing my friend. But it didn't. And in return, we killed it. I can't help but feel that we went to such lengths to keep ourselves safe from this thing. To kill this thing. Such lengths that we left ourselves bloody and tormented. All over this thing that never really meant us any serious harm to begin with. I just really don't know how to feel about this.